Hey what's up guys, Tektine here and I'm back again with a brand new video so before I begin I just want to thank you all so much for watching. If you're new to my channel don't be a stranger and make sure you leave a thumbs up. I have a lot more videos coming on this device and other devices so be sure to subscribe and don't miss out. So with that being said today we're going to be talking about the all new Samsung Galaxy S24 FE and as we know from the past FE generations that the FE stands for Fan Edition and this phone brings in some welcome improvements. So I've been using it for roughly a couple of hours, which is not enough to kind of give you guys a full conclusion or a full kind of review. I have enough information about this phone to kind of give you guys a solid first impressions and first look. So let's go ahead and get started. So the S24 FE is definitely a much larger phone than the previous S23 FE, so it does come in at 6.7 inches. And as far as the design wise, it does have these kind of squared off edges instead of the rounded edges from the previous generation. The back still uses Gorilla Glass 5, which is still a, this glossy material. And also on the back, you will have your triple camera setup, which trust me, we will definitely discuss later on, because they did also bring in some welcome improvements as well. And as well, you all do have your LED flash so i'm gonna be honest with you guys i'm not really a big fan of this kind of glossy material i was really a big fan of that frosty material that they used on their s24 and their s24 um plus and even their s24 ultra so i was hoping that they would bring that here to the s24 fe we just don't get that but then again these squared off sides is again a much better improvement than the kind of rounded sides it does provide a solid grip it is made out of aluminum which is definitely a premium material to use in a phone that costs $650. So this is truly a solid mid-range device when it comes to the design. When you look at the right hand side you will get your power button slash volume up and down and they are fairly tactile, they're really good buttons actually. We don't get a fingerprint sensor within the power button because it is embedded within the display. On the bottom of the phone, you will get your loudspeaker as well as two microphones and your USB-C port that unfortunately only supports 25 watt of wire charging. This phone also supports wireless charging, which is cool. But overall though, as a design, it's definitely subtle changes, but I would say they're really good enough to make you consider switching from the S23 to the S24 FE. So solid first look at the design. Let's go ahead and switch the conversation and talk a little bit about the display of the S24 FE. So it does also here come with slight improvements beginning with the size of the display. So you will get a 6.7 inch 2340 by 1080p which is a solid display to begin with and you will also get on the glass a Gorilla Glass Victus Plus for durability. However, what I notice is that this phone is going to be susceptible to scratches, so make sure you keep that in mind. Put a screen protector on this phone if you don't want to scratch it. It does also have a brightness up to 1900 nits, and I didn't really have any issues using this phone outdoors, so there's that for you. In addition to all that, as far as kind of quality of the display, Samsung does what Samsung does best, which is displays. Uh, first of all, the bezels on the top are slightly smaller than the previous generation, and this phone does have kind of 88% screen to body ratio which is again a slight improvement from the previous generation in addition to all that this phone does have support for hdr 10 plus 1900 nits of peak brightness and you also get motion smoothness which allows you to switch between 60 hertz and up to 120 hertz refresh rate which is cool to see on a 650 dollar phone uh, mind you the iphone 16 and 16 plus that cost more than this phone don't have that feature Shout out to my Apple fanboys. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the performance of this device. And this is where a lot of people actually got a little bit scared because Samsung went away with the Qualcomm Snapdragon processors on the S24 FE. In the past, they did use a lot of the Qualcomm chips on their FE devices. This time around, they decided to go with their own processor, which happens to be the Exynos 2400E based on a four nanometer architecture. And it is a 10 core processor. As far as the the GPU, they also use their proprietary GPU, which is the X Eclipse 940 GPU, 128 gigabytes of base storage, 8 gigabytes of RAM that both the, that only the storage is upgradable up to 512 gigabytes, but the RAM throughout their lineup is only 8 gigs. I'm not saying only like it's a low amount, but you know what I mean. Uh, as far as what I've been using this phone for, as far as like the daily tasks, things of that nature, this phone performs beautifully, fast, efficient, really quick. And I feel like this processor will compete very well with the Qualcomm chipsets from last year. 
In addition to all of that, you will get a slightly larger 4700 milliamp hour battery from the previous, I believe it was like 4500 milliamp hour battery on the S23 FE. But I will be doing a heavily demanded tests on both the CPU and GPU to kind of give you guys a better solid conclusion on the performance. All right, so let's go ahead and switch this conversation to something I'm excited for, which is the camera system on this device. So as far as your camera goes, you will get a triple camera setup, a 50 megapixel main sensor f1.8 aperture, an 8 megapixel f2.8 aperture telephoto lens that does support three times a uh, three times optical zoom and also has optical image stabilization. In addition to all that, you will get a 12 megapixel sensor f2.2 123 degree field of view ultra wide sensor a 10 megapixel front facing camera f2.4 that also supports recording video at up to 4k at 30 or 60 frames per second as far as your main sensor goes you will have support to recording video up to 8k at 30 frames per second which is a little bit of overkill but hey this is the fan edition so samsung fans thumbs up you also have recording 4k at up to 120 frames per second slow motion as far as my testing my little time with the camera testing on this phone it does shoot some really nice pictures in bright outdoor conditions. I will be again be doing way more testing than just this. I've only had this phone for a couple hours, but as you guys are watching this video, the camera review is already in the works. So be on the lookout for that. As far as my conclusion goes, this is definitely a welcome upgrade from the previous generation. It's not perfect, but it's definitely something that I think a lot of people would appreciate and enjoy, especially in a world where we live in. 